In a climate of increasing power demand and waning fossil fuels, a new emphasis has been put on the development of renewable energy. Solar panels, wind farms, and geothermal energy are currently in the environmental limelight, but another great power source exists, one that has never been pursued in earnest, the power of ocean tides. The moon's gravitational pull on our planet's oceans creates an effect known as tides. Water is pulled above its normal level once or twice during the day. Ocean levels are in constant flux from tides, changing from 2 to 17 meters near the coast. The displacement of that much water with such frequency is the source of tidal power. This is Rant's Tidal Power Plant, one of the only Barrage Tidal Power Plants in existence. Barrage power plants consist of three different parts. One, the barrage itself is made of concrete and holds the water back during high tide. The second part are the sluice gates. The sluice gates let water in and out during high and low tides. The third part is a conventional turbine and generator. From these three parts an incredible amount of power can be harnessed. The sluice gates are left open during high tide and closed during low tide to create a water level differential. This water differential then powers the turbine while the water is released. A downside to barrage power plants is that they rely on manipulation of ocean levels and therefore have the same effect on the environment as hydroelectric dams. This means a change in the local aquatic ecosystem and a high mortality for fish. This is SeaGen, the world's first commercial tidal stream generator. Tidal stream generators consist of three basic parts. The control box monitors and engages power generation during the tidal cycle. The turbine and generator converts the movement of water into electricity. And the underwater transmission lines transfer power back to shore. As the tide moves in and out, power is generated in much the same way as windmills. The difference is that water, which is 830 times denser than air, produces more energy at lower speeds. Unfortunately, this great burst of power is only generated a maximum of four times a day. Tidal power, like all forms of power generation, has pros and cons. On one hand, the power produced by tidal generators is clean and renewable. The only consumables are parts and labor. Also, there are thousands of untapped sites for tidal power, containing vast amounts of potential power. On the other hand, tidal power is intermittent by nature, posing a problem for utility supply and demand. The technology is just beginning to mature, meaning project prices are very high. Finally, tidal generators can deteriorate in the ocean over time, requiring a vigorous maintenance schedule. Barrage power plants have been commercially viable for years, but there have been no new projects until recently. There are current plans in South Korea for a 260 megawatt barrage power plant in Incheon Bay, and talks of an even larger plant in the Severn Estuary in Great Britain. In general, development of these power plants is slow and costly, but ongoing nonetheless. Tidal stream generators are on the cusp of commercial viability. Following the lead of CGEN, new commercial designs have been created, and many governments, including Canada, Great Britain, and China, have begun testing and deployment of the generators. In Canada, the Bay of Fundy and Vancouver Island are being studied for future tidal power plants. So, is tidal power truly on its way? Neil Ford of Water Power Magazine wrote in February that it is clear from the wide range of investors and new projects under development that tidal power is coming of age. Tides hold the potential to create billions of watts of clean energy, and major countries have now joined in that energy's pursuit. Like wind and solar before it, tidal energy is being harnessed. The question is no longer if, it is when.